Hey there guys, I'm back again with another video and I wanted to talk a little bit about communication. Uh, not a little bit about, actually I wanted to totally drill in all my feelings about communication and how important I think it really is in Christianity, in ministry, in our all in all walk with God. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot and I think a lot of it has been since ever since I moved to Bolivar and I moved to the school with all these different people my age and uh, just communicating with different people. It, it, it's allowed me to, um, you know, rather than going to school like I have in the past two years with a bunch of, you know, 45 year old moms going into nursing school, I've been able to talk to people my own age and they actually listen and they communicate back and forth. Now they don't communicate to quite the depthness of philosophical stuff that I would like to, but that's probably because I'm more open to that stuff immediately. But I've also realized that the importance of communication is severely in listening. And uh, I actually took a class, and it was about communication in, in different diversities of groups. And they were talking about how listening is the most important form of communication. And let me tell you why and why I believe this is the most important part of communication even in the ministry. Communication is listening. Listening is the most important part. Why do I believe that? Why do I believe that it plays such an important part in Christianity as well as in ministry? Okay, well, let's start with ministry first. When you hear the word ministry, what do you think of? You think of missions groups. You think of pastors and churches. You think about going out on the streets and uh, talking to people about Jesus. You know, you think about talking. We think about verbally putting things on people. And what if ministry was something completely different? What if ministry had something to do with listening? And I do believe that ministry is completely listening. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so this is what you typically hear. And this is what, if you ask any secular person out there, what their opinion is on Christians. Well, they'll tell you this. They'll say, well, they're very opinionated. And they basically tell you how to live your life. They think that Christians, us Christians, come to them telling them verbally how to live their life without us even listening to their point of view or anything else. This is what they hear. They say, you're living your life wrong. By the way, I love you. Okay. Yeah. You know, we say, well, we'll cover up all that, that harshness with the words, I love you. Because that's what Christianity is, right? That's what ministry is, right? It's loving them with God's love. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew 22, verse 37 through 40. That's the main commandment. That's what we should be doing. And so we cover up our verbal ministry and our verbal harshness with the words, I love you. Okay, if somebody did that to me and they said, I love you, I'd be thinking, that's a cover-up word. And that's exactly what they think. What if, though, if listening was the only form of ministry. How do we show somebody that we love them? How do we spend our time to show that we love them? Okay, look, talking is a lot of fun. I love talking. I love recording these videos. It's a lot of fun. I'm sure all of you guys have been in a uh, communication with somebody or a um, conversation with somebody and you start talking and you get deeper and deeper and deeper into your thoughts and then they interrupt you. And then they start sharing your own thoughts, and you didn't get to get into the nitty-gritty of what you were trying to say. And then you never get to it, and that communication is invalid. It doesn't work. There's no depthness. It's annoying, and it's not, it's not real communication. It's not working. Verbal communication works with listening, and listening is more important than, verbal part, than the verbal part of communication. One thing that I've realized is when people show that they love me, it's when they take their own time to listen to me speak. It takes a lot of love to do that. It, it, by doing that, you're showing I care about you enough to know how you are feeling. And I am going to take the time to listen to your opinion on it, to listen to your feelings and how your heart is feeling on this issue. That's love right there. You know, and I think maybe we've grown up thinking that, you know, our parents love us and they're always giving us wisdom verbally. 
But what if loving had mostly to do with hearing? And I do believe that. If I wanted to love a person on the street who I knew was on drugs, who was having sex every other night, um, who did all of the above, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, like visiting prostitute is what I mean. If if he was doing all these things, how would I show that person that I love them? And I think most, or how would I minister, minister to them? And most people would say, oh, well, you need to talk to them about Jesus and talk to them how, even though they're sinning, they can get out of this verbally telling them this. Now, if I was this bad guy, okay, if I was on the street doing drugs and marijuana and crack and all that fun stuff and visiting prostitutes and all that jazz, if somebody came to me and tried to say, hey, yo, look, you just need Jesus in your life, dog. You know, God will forgive you. And uh, by the way, I love you. I'm going to be like, you're weird and you're judgmental and I'm not listening. And I would walk away, and I'd continue doing my drugs, and I'd continue visiting prostitutes. I'm not saying I've done any of that, but I'm just saying that's exactly what I would think, and I know I would think that even as a Christian person. But if somebody came up to me while I was doing all these things, and, I, and they said, So, how are you feeling with your life? You know, how much trouble do you go through? Are you depressed? Are you going through a, s a stressful time right now? I would be more apt to open up. And I would tell them, oh, okay, well, this guy obviously isn't trying to judge me. I can actually share with him my story. And I would probably tell him, yeah, man, I'm on drugs. I'm not happy. I'm drinking alcohol. I'm drunk half the time. I'm visiting prostitutes, and I'm not happy. I would be, as that sinner, if you will, I would be sharing my story, and I would realize this person cares about me. And they didn't even talk about Jesus yet. But they were showing the love of God by giving me a listening ear. And I think that's how it is with everything. And not only is communication valid in Christianity and just normal communication day-to-day -day life. Uh, I'm not married yet, but I can almost promise you that communication via listening plays a huge part in marriage relationships, sibling relationships, any kind of relationships, even business, if we know how to listen 99% of the time and only talk when it is necessary and when it is caring for that other person, it's like mega communication. It's perfect. It's the best communication there is. And we look at all these ministries nowadays. We think, you know, we look at pastors. What do pastors do? They do this the entire time. There's no listening involved. The only listening that's involved in, in ministries and churches like that are like in youth groups. And even that, there's very little listening going on and very little verbal communication amongst the group. But there is a little communication, and that's why I like youth groups so much. When we think about ministries, ministries we think about talking. We think about talking people's heads off. But you think about the people that truly make a difference in ministry are those people who live under low profiles, they don't get noticed, and they simply offer an opening ear to listen to what they have to say. And believe it or not, being willing to listen to somebody is saying something. It's saying, I care about you enough that I want to understand how you are feeling and how, how you're hurt. I want to understand you. And it's not until these hurting people are willing to say, hey, how do you feel about this? How do you have an opinion of how I can fix my life, if you will? Then open your mouth. But don't use a lot of words because actions speak louder than words, not verbal stuff. You can say, oh, well, I believe this and this and this, but I understand exactly what you're feeling. And if you need to talk to me some more, just call me up on the cell phone. Here, here's my phone number. Here, I'll write it down for you. Ministry is in listening. Ministry is in caring for other people. Overall, ministry is in showing the love of God to other people. And I don't believe that showing the love of God is by telling them all the things that they're doing wrong and saying, hey, I love you and Jesus loves you too, so you should give your life over to him. That's not loving. That's just annoying. 
But what if we actually listened to people and took our own time? And that's another thing, too. Speaking is a selfish, selfish thing. But listening takes a lot of dedication and selflessness dedicated to that person. Anyway, that's my opinion, and that's my opinion on how or listening is a more important form of ministry than anything else. You have thoughts about it? Make a comment on the YouTube thing. I mean, there's plenty of room down there. Or, this will be on Facebook, so go ahead and make comments on Facebook. You can criticize me if you want. You can make different opinions. I know people will, because people like to do that. But anyway, share the video if you like this, and uh, I'll talk to you later.